So here's another common question I get. How much screw should I use when I'm attaching boards? In other words, how long of a screw is necessary to keep two materials pinned together? This gets complicated because it can vary by material and circumstance. But there are some rules of thumb that apply to screw length in general. So that's what we're talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. First things first, I'm gonna to focus today on what we call utility screws, especially deck screws, which are for construction, carpentry, and a lot of functional tasks. I'm looking at these because they're the best common screw to use wherever you need strength. But these rules do kind of apply to all types of screws, so keep that in mind. Okay, when you're pinning two boards together through the cross grain, like this, or like this, you really want one to one and a half inch of screw and screw thread going into the bottom piece. But sometimes this is too much screw because the bottom piece is only three quarter thickness. So if you have two of these pieces lying flat and you send a one and five eighths screw through it, obviously it's just gonna punch through the back. So in these cases, it's best to reduce to a one and a quarter and make sure it's fully embedded with a slight countersink. That's about the most grip you're gonna get without punching through the back. If you feel unsure about the connection, just add more screws. It's that simple. But in the end, put in as long of a screw as possible without punching through. Now, if you're attaching something to a wall, you can obviously go a lot deeper here because you're hitting the edge of a stud. You've got three and a half inches of wood in there, but you still don't want to use too much screw because there may be wiring in the wall and you could accidentally pierce it. I totally screwed this up in another video where I told folks to use a three inch screw. People corrected me on it down in the comments, which I appreciate. You really want to stick with a two and a half inch screw here if possible. That's enough for three quarters of surface material, a half inch of drywall, and another inch and a quarter of threads in the wall stud. The point may still get close to a badly placed wire in the wall, so you can scale down to a two and a quarter inch screw if you can find them, but they're not as popular. So it's something you just have to consider when you're working. You might just have to go carefully with the two and a half. Now, if you're connecting to end grain, you need more screw length. End grain doesn't hold threads very well. You really want almost two inches of screw to sink in here. So if you're attaching two by fours, you're best off with a three and a half inch screw. That's one and a half for the top piece and two inches for the bottom piece. If you're using three quarter inch material, you can probably get away with a two inch carefully pre-drilled. That's three quarters on the top piece and one and a quarter going into the bottom end grain. You don't need much more than this. There's no need to go way overboard with a much longer fastener. It's just gonna bulge the wood in the bottom piece and possibly break it. Put another way, I sometimes hear another rule of thumb that says you should have a third of the screw in the top board and two thirds of the screw in the bottom board. Now, here are some other important things to consider. You're often still better off pre-drilling, no matter the type of connection. It just makes driving the fastener easier. But for softwoods like pine, the pilot hole can be much smaller because the wood itself is softer and spongier. Sometimes you can even get away with not even pre-drilling really soft woods. This can help increase your fastening power because they're more elastic and they grab the screw. Also, there are two types of forces that work against screws, lateral pressure, and withdrawal pressure. Withdrawal pressure is caused by a force pulling two connected materials away from one another. Hanging something from the ceiling, in other words suspending it, will create this withdrawal or pull out pressure. In these instances, a longer fastener with more threads buried deeper into the submaterial will give the best resistance. You have more screw threads in there grabbing wood. Lateral pressure, also known as shear force, is created by sideways sliding pressure upon two materials in contact with one another. This time, think of mounting something straight into the wall and then suspending a weight from it. The weight is pulling down, trying to shear the fastener in half. In these cases, a thicker fastener is more optimal because it resists those shear forces better. Now, much of the time when we're fastening things with utility screws, we're using number eight gauge. That's a measure of the thread diameter, which is about 5 30 seconds of an inch. Bumping up to something thicker, like a 3 8 or half inch lag screw, will give you much more strength. And again, additional fasteners will also help your strength. If you're really in doubt, it just can't hurt to add another fastener. Just make sure they're not like right on top of each other. Give them a little bit of space. That's some quick info on screw length. I'll do a lot of videos on screws because there's actually so much to talk about with these things, but it's best to break it down into smaller subjects. That said, what did you think? Was this helpful? Anything you'd like to add or clarify? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I'll link some fasteners below, as well as some drills, bits, and drivers. Feel free to browse those. And remember that when you shop through those links, we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. It helps us keep making videos, and we greatly appreciate the support. 
as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.